I'm here at the Midwest Economics Association to present my paper, Sink Asset Subsidies and the Early Redemption of TALF Loans. We're meeting here in the beautiful downtown Evanston, wonderful district, millions of places to eat, a wonderful, beautiful area on the north side of Chicago. The Economics Association typically meets in the Chicago area every other year, and this is not the first time I've uh, presented a paper here. My paper is about uh, the Fed's efforts to help the uh, CMBS uh, commercial mortgage-backed securities markets. Subscribe to Linus Wilson on YouTube so you can get uh, more of my research and more videos that are of interest to both uh, YouTube creators and of uh, finance academics. Stay tuned all the way to the end so you can hear a full reading of my paper, Toxic Acid Subsidies and the Early Redemption of TALF Loans. But first, here is the seminar presentation of that paper. It's about to start. Come on in. In general, my work is about half my papers, probably over 20 papers, about the financial crisis of uh, 2008. Um, and I started out, I did, I did a theory the thesis for the doctoral thesis, and uh, my early work in this was kind of like the theory of the bailouts, were they doing the right bailouts? Uh, and then I was found that there were just so many programs going on uh, within the financial crisis that I turned to empirical work to look at the programs. I like this paper because it's kind of a a balance between there's a there's a theory component to it there's kind of a structural equation modeling um, maybe not a sequential game but um, and, and then there's also uh, empirical work and so um, this is one of the few papers talking about who uh, gives up the bailout subsidy uh, and uh, it I have another one about the, the capital purchase program so if you think about the, the, the whole breadth of papers that were done on the financial crisis and the program, a programmatic response to it, I would say probably half of them were done on the capital purchase program, uh, which was part of the TARP Congress passed bailout. Uh, but that and that's, those papers are focused on the banking sector, and many of them and uh, many more people have done uh, studies on them. Um, and then relatively few have been done on the much larger kind of emergency lending programs that the Federal Reserve has done. And so this is part of uh, the Federal Reserve piece of emergency lending, right? Uh, and, you know, how the bailouts were sold to Wall Street or sold to Washington was that we were going to buy up toxic assets. The government was going to buy up toxic assets, the higher prices for toxic assets were going to make the bank solvent, and they were going to uh, not fail, right? And the economy is going to be better and unemployment is going to be lower. Uh, in fact, the, the actual Congress passed bailouts, the TARP, were primarily a capital injection program, uh, which probably would have been more controversial had they sold it that way. Uh, and, and the toxic asset programs, which there were three of them, three pieces uh, proposed by the, the former New York Fed uh, president and uh, the Treasury Secretary at the time, Timothy Geithner, uh, were uh, the legacy loans program through the FDIC, which never happened, just never happened. <laughs> uh, and then there was the... Uh, um, there was the residential mortgage-backed securities program, which uh, which is called the PPIP, uh, which did happen, uh, and the this is the the, the commercial mortgage-backed security program through the Treasury and through the New York Fed, uh, the the TALF, the, and uh, term asset-backed securities loan facility. Say that five times fast. Uh, so the uh, so the
the Fed made a relatively small amount of loans to asset managers, 12.1 billion to purchase 14.3 billion. They were also pretty late in terms of the financial crisis. They started in July 2009 and then they finished in, in uh, March 2010. So the idea of all kind of Geithner's uh, programs was that we're gonna give these embedded options with non-recourse debt to subsidize the purchase of uh, loans, bad loans, or uh, bad securities, or securities that have gone bad that investors have lost faith in. Faith, faith in. So a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the lending is securitized, that it's packaged and bundled into very big securities uh, that have lots of different slices or tranches. Tranche is just the French name for slice. Uh, and some of these slices get, get money or cash flows from the loans earlier than others, and those are the higher rated tranches. And this program was focusing on the highest rated in terms of AAA rated tranches. So there's some tranches were rated triple B, some are rated AAA, but investors lost faith in all these securities because there was kind of really bad loans being made in 2006, 2007, and 2005 in the height bubble years of the financial crisis. So uh, there was a real big drop off in securitization of commercial mortgage-backed securities, uh, so bundled commercial mortgages uh, in mid-2008, you can see that big drop off. And this program started around here, and so maybe it helped, uh, but other factors were going on there too. Uh, so I think you'd see like the stock market bottom was sometime in March. Uh, so it, uh, what this paper does, it has a kind of option pricing framework to estimate the subsidy uh, in these things, and, and we estimate this, the average subsidy uh, on the purchase price was about 30, or it's just me, uh, and this paper is solo authored, 34% uh, and uh, when people redeem, so LD is loan date, RD is redemption date, when they redeemed it was about negative 11.4%. So most of the subsidy was gone by the time uh, they either redeemed or the end of the period study. And so the period study, I kind of picked it at random, but I think it was actually kind of an ideal period to study uh, because uh, the so you can see it's a period of declining credit spreads too. Uh, it was kind of an ideal period of study. If we look kind of too far. Uh, right, okay, so you look at like the number of observations here, right, it's about equal to that. I think that makes it easier. I'll let the statisticians out there guess, but I, I'm pretty sure I have another paper about uh, about these guarantees to money market funds, right? So that, so thank you to the theoretical paper we had at the beginning of the session. You know, if you think you want to talk about the run on the banks that we had during the financial crisis, that was probably a run on money market funds uh, or a run on the repo, right? That that was the the silent run, uh, not so much a deposit run. Uh, but anyways, that paper, you know, we've got almost every money market fund took the took the government guarantee and paid for the government guarantee. Whereas in this, we got about half, or, or half and half, and I think that uh, makes it a bit more persuasive for a time period. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, let me kind of, you can, these are different different vintages of, of uh, CMBS uh, had greater uh, credit spreads. Uh, and so these are, basically CES contracts uh, when I'm talking about the credit spreads, we're not going to worry about that. Uh, this is kind of the, the model, this is just a kind of black schools model to estimate the subsidy and so M star is the price paid for the loans, M is not observed, 
L is the amount of leverage in each loan, which is about 84%. Uh, and we numerically estimate, or I numerically estimate the subsidy level based on putting in all the data for a black school setup. Um, so uh, we're hypothesizing subsidy rates will decline uh, if people are redeeming loans. Uh, spreads will decline if people are redeeming loans. Uh, you have a higher uh, volatility when people pay back the loan. So when, when, the, when the asset managers, and these are people like BlackRock, PIMCO, and then other hedge funds you probably never heard of, or private equity managers you never heard of, uh, th those are the, the people that are buying these loans. And the, the people that bundle these loans are people like Bank of America and Lehman Brothers. UBS. Uh, so you think of the kind of the big, uh, big New York banks uh, or the big, uh, the big investment banks. Those are the bundlers of this uh, CMBS, and the buyers are uh, asset managers, uh, primarily focusing on uh, sophisticated investors. Um, So we, uh, it's just like a, almost everything's significant in this model. Uh, so this, uh, so the higher the subsidy at the loan date, the more likely they are to redeem. Uh, the the higher uh, TAL spread at the loan date, the more likely they are to redeem early. Uh, the the change in the credit spreads for that particular vintage of loan. Uh, the bigger the change, the more likely they are to redeem. That is the bigger the, the fall uh, in the credit spreads. Uh, the, the, the bigger the volatility uh, at the loan date, uh, the less likely they are to redeem. And uh, the higher the loan to value ratio, the less likely they are to redeem. And the tranche rank, if you're number one tranche, so they have uh, Trip, not all AAA tranches are, are the same, right? So some AAA tranches get paid before other AAA tranches. And so because of that, uh, you have uh, like number one tranche is uh, most likely to get paid and number seven tranche is least likely to get paid even though they're all AAA, right? Because this number seven tranche is paid seven in line. So there's a waterfall structure to the CMBS. Um, so we find that the trillion dollar asset managers, BlackRock and PIMCO, were much more likely to redeem. So, you know, this is one of my favorite papers, even though it's not been published yet. Um, another one of my favorite pa papers is Escaping TARP with Wendy Wu, my frequent co-author. Uh, and they're both about redeeming loans and you know one of the lessons from escaping TARP uh, was that the uh, stigma mattered, right? That that it, it seems like the bigger you are, the more likely you're going to pay back the government early uh, without pay without causing any losses, right? So whenever the government gets paid back, in this case, the the, the New York Fed gets paid back their loans and the, 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 the CMBS is sold early, the, uh, the Fed doesn't lose any money. So there's, I think there's a, there's a good case for there's a reputational thing going on there or there's a too big to fail thing going on that you, if you're a large institution, uh, you're, at least in the, the financial crisis, uh, you, were, you were under a lot of pressure to repay early. Um, Whereas you have these little tiny asset managers, I say tiny, but it's like, you know, you measure them in billions or tens of billions in assets under management versus PIMCO and BlackRock, much less likely to pay back early. But other factors could be out there too, right? You know, the big asset managers, uh, or if you're talking about my paper, Escaping TARP, uh, the uh, big, uh, the big banks, they have bigger access to external financing, so government financing may be more attractive 
uh, to a small asset manager, a small bank versus uh, a, a large bank that has a lot of options. So uh, this is a, oh look, I see there's a timer there, that's nice. I didn't even see that until now. Uh, so this is the uh, only study I know of about the re, uh, repayment of TALF loans. And I'm not sure if there's any kind of empirical work just looking at the TALF program in general. Um, CNBS is hard to do, to be honest. You know, there's not a lot of data out there on CNBS issues. Uh, so it's kind of nice to get this Fed look into this. You know, the Fed was kind of brought, kick, uh, uh, force kicking and screaming to, to reveal their emergency lending program. So one of the reasons why we always talk about the, 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 the TARP program, the bank bailouts that went through Congress versus the, the much larger bailouts of the financial sector that went through the Fed and didn't get that much scrutiny because they didn't have any scrutiny. They, didn't, they were not disclosed until 2010, and that was a function of the Dodd-Frank Act. Uh, and so, uh, but you know, you, you've got to say that they, they're, there's a good chance that they were maybe even more important uh, in terms of resuscitating the financial sector. Appreciate your comment. Thank you. Stay tuned for a reading of my paper, Toxic Acid Subsidies and the Early Redemption of TALF Loans. You can download a copy by following the link in the description or going to my website, linuswilson.com. Go to research and find the paper where you can download it by hitting the orange download button once you get to the abstract page on SSRN. Toxic Acid Subsidies and the Early Redemption of TALF Loans by Linus Wilson, read by Linus Wilson. This paper develops a formula to numerically estimate the unsubsidized fair market value of toxic acids purchased with Federal Reserve loans. It finds that the subsidy rates on these loans average 33.9% at origination, but by the third quarter of 2010, there was on average no subsidy in TALF loans. The theoretical model is used to predict the early redemption of term asset-backed securities loan facility loans used to purchase commercial mortgage-backed securities. The predictions of the model are strongly supported by the data. In addition, this paper looks at the determinants of early redemption. CMBS originated inside the peak bubble years of 2005 to 2007 were much less likely to be redeemed early. The giant investment managers BlackRock and PIMCO were much more likely to redeem their TALF loans early than smaller investment managers. Introduction. The term asset-backed securities loan facility, TALF, Commercial Mortgage-Backed Security Program, was launched by the Federal Reserve in response to a large decline in the securitization of new CMBS and a drop-off in trading of existing CMBS. After the failure of the investment bank Lehman Brothers and the freezing up of credit markets in late 2008 and 2009, the TALF CMBS program was one of the components of the U.S. Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner's efforts to revive the market for real estate-related loans and securities, which had been considered toxic by investors in 2008 and 2009, according to Wilson 2011. By March 2009, the spread over swaps for investment grade CMBS was 12.4%. In 2009, there was only 3.4 billion in new CMBS issuance. Yet the spreads in CMBS in the Barclays investment grade index had declined to 2.3% by the start of 2011. Analysts projected that 45 billion in new CMBS would be issued in 2011 but that would not be enough to displace over 600 billion in CMBS that would be maturing in 2011. Footnote one, according to Wilson 2011, there were two other components of the US government's toxic asset purchase plan. Those two other programs were the legacy securities program run by the US Treasury and the legacy loans program run by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. The legacy securities program has financed the purchase of CMBS, but primarily it has financed the purchase of residential mortgage securities. Only 18% or $3.4 billion of the $19.3 billion of securities purchased through the legacy security program by September 30, 2010 consisted of CMBS. See U.S. Treasury October 
20th Legacy Securities Public Private Investment Program. Unlike the Federal Reserve's TAL program, the U.S. Treasury has not released any data on the actual CMBS and residential mortgage-backed securities purchased by the Legacy Securities Program by the start of 2011. Barclays CMBS index tracks various features of the triple B and higher rated CMBS market. In figure one, we can see the index grew from just under 100 billion in market capitalization to 2000 to just under 600 billion at the end of 2007. This Barclays CMBS index is far from recovering those heights. It only had a loan market capitalization of $376 billion at the start of 2011. This paper studies the characteristics of the Federal Reserve's TALF loans that were used to buy CMBS. These TALF loans were used to put up about 85% of the purchase price to buy AAA tranches of CMBS. Yet AAA rating grade inflation in the securitization market meant that on average AAA tranches of CMBS had credit spreads above the benchmark risk-free rate between 151 and 302 basis points during the period study, depending on the securities date of issue. Using a model developed in this paper, it is estimated that the average loan had a subsidy worth 34% of the amount when it was made. Yet by the repayment date or the end of the period study, the average subsidy was a negative 11%. The paper focuses on the characteristics of TALF loans that were repaid early prior to September 30, 2010. It finds that higher interest rate spreads over the risk-free rate and lower volatilities were associated with early loan redemptions. Loans that bought more senior, better protected CMBS tranches were more likely to be repaid. Loans purchasing CMBS issued in the peak years of the credit bubble, 2005, 2006, and 2007, were slightly less likely to be repaid. The bond giants PIMCO and BlackRock were twice as likely as other asset managers to repay their TAL CMBS loans early. This effect is strong and significant even after controlling for other factors. The predictions of this paper's theoretical model are strongly supported by the data. The model predicts that early repayments will occur when loan subsidies decline, the spread over treasuries on loans rises, and the volatility of the underlying asset declines. For the loans that were repaid early, the subsidies on TALF loans declined significantly from the loan date to the repayment date. The spread over the risk-free rate on repaid loans rose significantly from the loan date to the loan repayment date, and volatility declined significantly. In the next section, we discuss the relevant literature. This is the only empirical paper to study which TALF CMBS loans are repaid early. It is the first paper to estimate the subsidies on TALF loans and buy CMBS using a continuous time model. The data is introduced in Section 3. In Section 4, a theoretical model is developed to estimate TALF loan subsidies, and its predictions are tested. Those predictions are strongly supported by the data. In Section 5, t-tests and logistics regressions are used to determine the characteristics of TALF loans used to buy CMBS. There is little evidence that borrows that redeem TALF loans to buy CMBS were better at market timing, yet there is strong evidence to say that the giant asset managers BlackRock and PIMCO were more likely to repay their government debts early. Relevant Literature this is the only paper to empirically study the characteristics of TAL CMBS loans that are repaid early. This is the only paper to develop a theoretical model of the subsidies in TAL loans and to empirically test if the subsidy rates are related to the propensity for firms to repay TAL loans early. This paper finds that as estimated subsidy rates decline, the TAL CMBS recipients are more likely to repay their Federal Reserve loans early. Pavlov and Walker 2002, 2009, A, 2009, B, demonstrate how low interest non recourse loans can inflate real estate bubbles. From the date of the first loan to the end of the third quarter of 2010, the Federal Reserve's non recourse loans in the TALF CMBS program have contributed to a decline of AAA credit spreads for CMBS between 87 and 239 basis points, depending on the date of issue of the reference CMBS. 
Subsidized purchases of AAA CMBS may have contributed to this bond rally. Finally, this is the, also the first paper to develop a continuous time numerical solution for the fair market value of the collateral purchase with subsidized government loans. Theory papers on the government's toxic asset programs. There are several studies of the government's plan to buy toxic assets. Bonsali and Wise attempt to price the option of TALF borrowers to default on a bundle of cor correlated loans. Loans. Yet unlike this paper, Bonsali and Wise does not use data on actual TALF transactions in their theoretical model. Moreover, it does not attempt to estimate the Federal Reserve subsidy on loans it is making through the TALF program as developed in this paper. Wilson, 2011, like Bonsali and Wise, 2009, is a theoretical model of the government's toxic asset programs, including TALF. Nevertheless, Wilson does not solve for the government subsidy in TALF loans using a continuous time model, Wilson does not perform any empirical tests of the model. The informal models of Wilson 2010A and Wilson 2010B do not even deal with the TALF program directly. Wilson 2010B discusses the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation's legacy loan program to sell distressed real estate loans. Wilson 2000A discusses why large banks would be reluctant to part with volatile toxic assets because the volatile utility adds to shareholder value. Footnote 3. Non-recourse loans allow borrowers non-collateral assets to be protected in the event of default. Wilson 2011 has a good non-technical description of non-recourse loans. Empirical studies on CMBS. The studies on the TALF CMBS program have either provided excellent introductions to the Federal Reserve program, such as Agarwal et al., or have been event studies on markets or securities affected by the TALF. Examples of the latter are event studies are Campbell et al. 2011, Ashcraft et al. 2010, and Ashcraft et al. 2011. In contrast to the latter event studies, the present study looks at the characteristics of Tau CMBS loans which are repaid early. Campbell et al. uses indicative dealer quotes from a single dealer, J.P. Morgan, not actual trade data, to argue that TALF program had no significant effects on the yields of individual securities. Nevertheless, it is hard to interpret quotes which do not commit the market maker to actually buy or sell the security at a given price. Moreover, the author's conclusion from insignificant results that there was no subsidy in the Federal Reserve's TALF loans may be driven as much by the four authors' employment at the Federal Reserve as by their statistical analysis of the non-transaction data. Further, the theoretical analysis in the present paper is consistent with the idea that dealers would not adjust their prices for CMBS. The subsidy goes to the purchaser of the CMBS with the government's TALF loan. A purchaser without the government assistance will not accept lower yields. In contrast to Campbell et al. 2011, Ashcraft et al. 2010 do find the introduction of the TALF program did have a significant impact on the yields of CMBS. Ashcraft et al. 2011 also develop a macroeconomic model where rising haircuts on collateralized loans lead to reduced economic activity. Ashcraft et al. argue that the Federal Reserve, by requiring below market haircuts, spurred economic activity and lowered yields on collateralized loans. The results in Ashcraft et al. are also confirmed in Ashcraft et al. 2011. Ashcraft et al. 2011 finds a negative and significant effect on the yields when the Federal Reserve announced the TALF program in November 2008. There is also some empirical literature on the commercial mortgage backed securities that uses data which precedes the bursting of the credit bubble in 2007 and 2008. The securitization of commercial mortgages is a relatively new phenomenon. Only 0.1% of commercial mortgages were securitized in 1970. Thus, academic literature on the CMBS is still at an early stage. The CRE Finance Council finds that commercial mortgage securitizations were never more than 28% of commercial mortgage originations in any given year. By the third quarter of 2010, the book value of CMBS Outstanding was about 20% or $0.64 trillion compared to the $3.2 trillion of the U.S. commercial mortgage loans outstanding.
of the CRE Finance Council, January 14, 2011, Compendium of Statistics, accessed online on January 16, 2011. Subordination is the cushion that protects the higher rated slices or tranches of CMBS from taking losses. Anne et al. 2008 find that rating agencies required significantly lower levels of subordination over time. In their last year of their study, 2005, the largest decline in subordination was observed. Thus, they show the rating agency's standards for CMBS slipped as the real estate bubble of the mid 2000s took off. The present paper finds that TALF loans to buy safer CMBS tranches with credit protection were much more likely to be redeemed early than loans used to buy riskier subordinated tranches. Several studies look at the factors affecting CMBS yields. Tim and et al. 2005 find from 1992 to 2002, credit spreads over U.S. Treasuries on CMBS were highest for the riskiest segment of commercial loans, hotels. Other studies on securitization look at how the originator of the commercial mortgages affects their pricing and yields. And at all 2009 argue that multifamily commercial mortgages that were securitized from 1992 to 2008 were able to offer interest rates of 11 to 20 basis points lower than comparable commercial mortgages held as portfolio loans as the originator. Titman and Tipsala of 2010 look at the data from 1996 to 2002. They find that commercial mortgage originators with bad accounting or stock price performance prior to the securitization are required to have greater levels of subordination. Moreover, the poorly performing originators have mortgage packaged into CMBS with higher yields. Thus, poorly performing originators may let their standards slip to push a deal through. Finally, Anne et al. 2011 argue that lenders that cannot hold portfolio loans, conduit lenders, issue CMBS with yields 34 basis points lower than comparable lenders that choose between securitization and holding their CMBS loans. They argue that this difference is due to the adverse selection of poor quality loans for CMBS by originators with more options than conduit conduit lenders. The present study finds no evidence that CMBS collateral from particular issuers were more likely to lead to early TALF loan redemptions after controlling for other factors. Nevertheless, in the t-test results from this study, we do find that the loans to buy CMBS issued by Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns were significantly less likely to be paid back early at the 95% and 90% level of confidence, respectively. Section 3, Data. The Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act of 2010 required the Federal Reserve to release the identities of borrowers who received $3.3 trillion of loans from December 1st, 2007 to July 21st, 2010. On December 1st, 2010, the Federal Reserve complied with that law. Of those lendings programs was the term assets backed loan facility TALF, which made loans to investors purchasing asset backed securities. The TALF program passed out loans totaling $43 billion before the program was discontinued in 2010. The TALF program made 686 different loans totaling $12.1 billion to purchase. 14.3 billion of CMBS. The TALF sponsored purchases of CMBS that were made from July 24, 2009 to March 29, 2010. The TALF CMBS program is now closed for new investment. As Wilson 2010 explains, the CMBS TALF program was part of the U.S. Treasury's legacy security program to encourage investment in toxic mortgages. The subsidy rates were calculated using formulas which will be developed in the next section. Data about loan amounts, loan dates, redemption dates, assets purchased, the identity of borrowers, and CMBS issuers are obtained from the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve. U.S. Treasury rates are obtained from the St. Louis Federal Reserve's Bank Fred data site. The TALF loans had spreads over comparable maturity U.S. Treasuries of an average of 1.35% when the TALF loans were originated. Let us denote the redemption date RD as the earlier of when the TALF loans were repaid or September 30th, 2010. On the redemption date, the spread over the U.S. Treasuries for TALF loans was on average 2.44%. This reflects the fact that the current yield curve was steeply up 
upward sloping over time. Thus, the fixed rates on the TALF loans became much higher than the relevant U.S. Treasury rate as the years to maturity on those loans declined. Thus, the upward sloping yield curve created incentive for early TALF CMBS repayment. Another factor driving repayments was the decline in AAA CMBS spreads over this period. Almost all CMBS tranches purchased with TALF loans were rated AAA or AAA by Moody's or S&P respectively by the start of 2011, according to the author's analysis. Yet we will see below the creditworthiness of investors with respect to AAA rated CMBS declined over this period. The increasing spreads on TALF loans and the decreasing market spread should combine to make the Federal Reserve loans less appealing. The CMBX is an index owned and operated by market, which allows investors to take long or short positions on a basket of 25 large CMBS issues. Short investors on the CMBX buy credit protection, while long investors receive fixed premiums for supplying their credit protection. According to Todd and Ewa, 2006, a decline in the CMBX index, or equivalently an increase in the credit spreads of the index, mean that investors believe that the credit worthiness of CMBS of a particular rating or vintage of issue have declined. The CMBX has five different vintages for each credit rating for roughly a six-month period from the first half of 2006 to the first half of 2008. After 2008, the issuance of CMBS had slowed dramatically. The drop in the new issuance was so dramatic that there was not enough new CMBS originations to allow for another vintage of the index in the second half 2008 all of 2009 and all of 2010. While the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009 led to a huge widening of AAA rated credit spreads on the CMBX, figure two shows that those spreads generally declined from the CMBS purchase with TALF funds on July 24, 2009 until the end of the Federal Reserve's reporting period of September 30, 2010. This means that the investors' fears of default for AAA rated CMBS CMBS declined over this period. Moreover, the figure in Table 2 demonstrate that latter vintages of AAA CMBS from 2007 and early 2008 were perceived to have greater default risk than vintages of AAA CMBS originated in early 2006 and late 2005. To calculate the decline in credit spreads over the private investor's TALF holding period, each loan was matched with the CMBX AAA index that closely matched the CMBS's issue date. Vintages of CMBS issued in 2008 or later were matched with the fifth and latest vintage of the CMBX AAA index. Commercial mortgages issued in 2007 were assigned the average credit spread for the given loan date or redemption date of the third and fourth vintages of the CMBX AAA. The third and fourth vintages of the CMBX CMBX AAA index debuted in the first and second half of 2007. CMBS issued in 2006 were matched with the second vintage of the AAA index. Finally, all CMBS issued in 2005 or earlier were assigned credit spreads from the CMBX's first vintage, which consisted of CMBS issued in 2005 and early 2006. Table 2 finds that all vintages of CMBX AAA index have significantly different credit spreads than other vintages of that index. All of these two-tailed t-tests of the differences between the means are statistically significant with greater than 99.9% .9 confidence. The greatest credit spreads and credit risks are associated with the 4th, 5th, 3rd, 2nd, and 1st vintages of the CMBX AAA index. That means the first vintage from early 2006 is associated with the least credit risk over the TALF investment period, and the 4th vintage from late 2007 is associated with the most credit risk. By the 5th vintage, there had been mass rating downgrades of AAA rated residential mortgage-backed securities and collateralized debt obligations. CDOs in July 2007, October 2007, and January 2008 by Moody's and S&P respectively. In other words, investors could no longer ignore the risk in the securitization markets by the fifth iteration of the CMBX index, and tightened credit standards may have began to take hold, leading to less risky securitizations. Private investors who bought CMBS when the CMBS spreads over 
U.S. Treasuries were high and the CMBS prices were thus low and sold those securities when those spreads were low and the CMBS prices were thus high, likely booked a tidy profit. We would expect that investors buying over a period of declining CMBS spreads would be more likely to sell their holdings and repay their TALF loans early. This would let these investors book a market timing profit. Hypothesis 1. The investors that repay their TALF loans early are more adept at timing the market as measured by a decline in credit spreads. That is, the loans that are repaid early were used to purchase commercial mortgage-backed securities that experienced greater declines in credit spreads over the holding period than CMBS bought with TALF loans that are not repaid. We will test hypothesis in Section 4. We will see that the market timing can be decisively rejected as a reason why some investors redeem their TALF loans early. The annualized volatility was estimated from agency mortgage-backed security returns. Exchange-traded funds are securities that usually track an index but can be bought and sold on an exchange similar to a stock. The exchange-traded fund, which goes by the ticker MBG, tracks the agency mortgage pass-through market. The securities making up the MBG exchange-traded fund are mortgage-backed securities issues backed by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and Ginny Mae, for example. Historic prices and dividends for MBG were obtained from Yahoo Finance. The 30-day historic volatility averaged 9.2% at the TAL loan date, but declined to 3.8% by the earlier of the redemption date, or September 30, 2010. The latter date is denoted by RD. A 60-day historic volatility declined from 12.5% to 4.0% the low date to redemption date on average. The average child CMBS loan paid a fixed interest rate of 2.33% and it had about 4.11 years to Maturity on the origination date. By the redemption date, the TALF loans had 3.37 years to maturity on average. On average, the TALF CMBS loans were for $17.6 million. The smallest TALF CMBS loan was for $10 million, and the largest TALF CMBS loan was for $80.3 million. Loans range from 78.9% of the purchase prices to a maximum of 85.6% of the purchase price. Most transactions for, for CMBS originated in the peak bubble years of 2005, 2006, and 2007. 23.3%, 31.9%, and 34.3% of CMBS was originally issued in those three years, respectively. The top five private issues in TALF CMBS deals, which each participated in more than 40 or more loans, were Arrow Point 40 deals, BlackRock 94 deals, DMR 48 deals, Ladder 78 deals, and PIMCO 55 deals. Combined, the five firms received 45.6% of the 686 TALF CMBS loans. The author could find out little about Arrowpoint, which is a Denver, Colorado-based investment manager. BlackRock's website said it had, as of September 30, 2010, $3.45 trillion in assets under management. Declaration Management and Research, DMR, listed its assets under management as $10.7 billion as of September 30, 2010 on its website. Likewise, Ladder Capital listed its assets under management as $2.5 billion. In contrast, the Newport Beach, California-based PIMCO managed over $1.24 trillion by the third quarter of 2010. Thus, both BlackRock and PIMCO are much larger asset managers than the other three of the top five TALF CMBS investors. We would expect that both BlackRock and PIMCO would be worried about political consequences of defaulting on TALF loans. Wilson and Wu, for example, argue that political stigma may have driven large banks to repay TARP loans early in 2009. Those larger funds may also have investment management skill, which allows them to garner greater assets under management than other large TALF CMBS investors. More skilled investors will be able to close out their TALF CMBS loans early and book a profit. Finally, if it seems likely BlackRock and PIMCO have greater access to credit than Arrowpoint, DMR, and Ladder. Thus, the former firms would be able to refinance the TALF loans more easily
easily as the Fed loans matured. Hypothesis two, the biggest asset managers, BlackRock and PIMCO, will be more likely to repay their TALF CMBS loans earlier than smaller asset managers. Hypothesis two receives strong support when we test the data in section four. The top 10 issuers of CMBS purchased with TALF money were Bank of America, Bear Stearns, Citigroup, Credit Suisse, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, the team of Lehman Brothers and UBS, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, and Wachovia. Only JP Morgan and Wachovia issued more than 10% of CMBS purchased through the TALF program. The top 10 issuers made up 79.7% of the 686 TALF CMBS deals. The dummy variable equals 1 if the commercial mortgage-backed security was issued by a bank for which the dummy variable is named and zero otherwise. CMBS have various slices or tranches of different seniority. The waterfall structure of these securities means that money flows into the highest rated tranches before any lower rated tranches are paid in a given period. Even if several tranches are rated triple A, the more senior tranches are safer because they have more protection against default. By searching the QSIP numbers of the CMBS at the S&P and Moody's websites, the author found the seniority and rating of the tranches of the CMBS issue for 664 of the 686 CMBS purchases with the Federal Reserve loans. The author was able to obtain the tranche of the CMBS. A number between 1 and 7 was assigned to the tranche to note its rank. A rank of 1 indicates that the CMBS was the most senior tranche of that issue. The rating of the collateral for the TALF loans was also obtained from Moody's and S&P's websites. About three quarters of the issues were rated by Moody's and three quarters of the issues were rated by S&P. 96% of the issues were rated by one of the two agencies. Very few CMBS tranches which were used as collateral for the TALF loans were rated less than AAA by either agency in January 2010 when the ratings data was collected. Section 4, a theoretical model of TALF loans. In this section, we develop a theoretical model of the hidden subsidy embedded in TALF's non-recourse loans. Non-recourse loans allow borrowers to walk away from the loan by ceding the collateral with no other ill effects to the borrower. Thus, the non-collateral assets of the borrower are safe. These loans give the borrower essentially a call option, according to Krugman, Stiglitz, and Wilson, because the loans do not have to be paid if the collateral is worth less than the loan. Thus, we can model the behavior of the TALF borrower similar to that of the buyer of a call option using a black skulls. 1973 framework. The TALF asset manager buys a call option on the underlying asset worth M. While M is not directly observed, it can be estimated using the black skulls setup. We want to numerically solve for the M that satisfies the equation below. C0 is the value of the asset manager's call option or stake in the TALF collateral. ND1 is the cumulative normal density function where I equals 1 or 2. EXP stands for the exponential number. LUN is the natural log. M star is the price paid for the CMBS. L is the loan funded by the New York Fed. Lambda is the leverage ratio, which is defined as L divided by M star equals lambda. R is the rate of interest charged on the TALF loan converted to a continuously compounding rate. RF is the risk-free rate adjusted for continuously compounding. Sigma is the annualized volatility of the CMBS. In equation one, we want to numerically solve for the M that causes both the right-hand side and the left-hand side of line A to be equal to each other. Once we have numerically assigned a value to the toxic asset M, using equation one, we can estimate the loan subsidy at the date of issue using put-call parity. Put-call parity in this instance could be written as follows m star minus l equals m minus the quantity lambda m star exponential in brackets r minus rf t out of brackets p m star minus l is the value of the call option on the toxic asset which is observable from the price paid m star and the loan amount l m is the underlying asset solved for equation one lambda m star exp quantity 
quantity R minus RF and quantity T is the present value of the strike price, the call option. P is the put option written on the New York Fed that allows the borrower to default on the loan and cede only the asset. Rearranging equation two, the value of the TALF loans to the New York Fed and the U.S. Treasury, which has a junior stake in these loans, is the following. Equation three, the right-hand side is easy to value after numerically solving equation one. The present value of the TALF CMBS loan can be found by subtracting the loan amount from the right-hand side of the equation three. Thus, the present value of the TALF loan to the Fed is M minus M star. If this number is negative, then there is a subsidy to private investors. The subsidy rate S of any given TALF loan can be calculated as the following. S equals M star minus M divided by L. Hypothesis H1. The subsidy rates for TALF loans, M star minus M all divided by L, will be higher when the CMBS is purchased than when the Federal Reserve loans are paid in full. The author predicts that private investors will only accept TALF loans when the financial terms entail a subsidy. Likewise, when there is little or no subsidy, then private investors will tend to repay their TALF loans early. When M star equals M, there is no subsidy implied by the loan terms. Yet, if M star is greater than M, then the redemption of the TALF loans means that the investor is giving up some subsidized financing. If M star is less than M, redemption of the TALF loans allows the investor to shed financing that has become more expensive than it is worth. Hypothesis 2, H2. The spread over the risk-free rate will be higher on the TALF CMBS redemption date than on the loan date. Higher spreads over the risk-free rate mean the TALF loans are more expensive forms of financing. The steeply upward sloping yield curve over this period means that the fixed rate TALF loans become more expensive as they mature. This is because the yields on the U.S. Treasury bills and notes fall as the maturity of the loan shortens, while the fixed rate of the TALF loan is unchanged. Hypothesis 3. The volatility of CMBS will be higher on the TALF loan date than on the redemption date. Higher volatility means the call option on the CMBS is more valuable. Thus, private investors will accept TALF financing when the volatility of the CMBS is high and shun TALF loans when the volatility is low. All three hypotheses are strongly supported by the data. The loan date subsidy rate is significantly greater than the redemption date subsidy rate. The loan date interest rate spread over U.S. Treasuries is significantly lower than the redemption date interest rate spread over U.S. Treasuries. Finally, the estimated volatility is significantly lower when funds are repaid. In Table 3, all three hypotheses are statistically significant with the predicted sign with greater than 99.9% .9 confidence. Predicting early TALF CMBS redemptions. Two-tailed t-tests of factors associated with early TALF CMBS loan redemptions. In Table 4, we look at the differences between the means for investments where the TALF loans were repaid prior to September 30, 2010, and those investments where the TALF loans were still outstanding. There were 338 loans with a par value of $5.9 billion that were repaid, and 348 loans with a par value of $6. 6.1 billion that were still outstanding at the end of the third quarter 2010. For the purposes of this table and table 5, the redemption date is defined as the lesser of the day the TALF loans were repaid or September 30th, 2010. Loans that were repaid were made over a month earlier on an average than investments that were still outstanding by September 30, 2010. Since historic volatilities declined over this period, the loan date and redemption date volatilities were higher for loans that were repaid than loans that were still outstanding. Also, the subsidies estimated from equations 1 and 4 were higher both at the loan date and redemption date for loans that were repaid versus loans that were still outstanding. By the redemption date, the model in Section 3 estimated that the subsidies had disappeared from the TALF loans. Thus, if an investor failed to redeem a TALF loan, then that was probably a sign that that particular CMBS issue was underperforming for the market as a whole. Because of the decline in credit spreads in Figure 2 and the earlier loan dates, and redemption dates for investors repaying the TALF loans, loans that were repaid had significantly
higher CMBX spreads at the loan date and redemption date than loans that were not repaid. The decline in credit spreads from the loan date to redemption date was greater for investors that held on to TALF loans than investors that repaid them. Thus, with over 99% confidence, we can reject hypothesis one, which predicted early repayments would be the result of market timing. We will come to a similar conclusion in the multivariate test of the hypothesis in Table 5. Thus, there is no evidence that better market timing as measured by declines in credit spreads explains early TALF CMBS loan repayments. Investors that did repay early paid significantly higher interest rates and had significantly longer maturities at both the loan date and redemption date. The maturity at the loan date was 0.7 years longer for loans that were repaid early relative to loans that were still outstanding. Loan-to-value ratios were significantly higher for loans that were not repaid, yet the difference was small, less than 1%, relative to the overall leverage ratio of about 84% loan-to-value for both groups. Less senior tranches of CMBS were more likely to be repaid early. Thus, part of the explanation for early repayments may be that less senior tranches saw greater recoveries over the period than more senior tranches. Loans made on CMBS of the 2006 vintage were significantly more likely to be repaid. In contrast, loans that were made with collateral from the 2007 vintage of CMBS were significantly less likely to be repaid. Yet many of the findings highlighted in this paragraph are reversed in logistic regressions in Table 5 when we control for other factors. Of the top five purchasers of CMBS with TALF loans, both BlackRock and PIMCO were significantly more likely to repay TALF loans early, this result is significantly greater than zero with 99.9% .9 confidence. This supports hypothesis too that those large asset managers re would repay their TALF loans earlier than other asset managers. Hypothesis two also strongly supports the logistic regression results in Table 5. The small asset managers DMR and Ladder, which both took out more than 40 TALF loans, were significantly less likely to repay their TALF loans early. Yet these latter results about DMR and Ladder are not borne out when we adjust for other factors in the logistic regressions. There were few strong relationships between the issue of the CMBS and early TALF loan repayment. With 95% confidence, TALF loans used to purchase CMBS issued by Lehman Brothers UBS were significantly less likely to have repaid early. This effect disappeared in the logistic regressions, which controlled for other factors. For the sake of brevity, the logistic regressions with issuer dummies were not reported. There was no significant relationship between the identity of the CMBS issuer and early TALF loan redemption in the logistic regressions. Likewise, both in the reported univariate tests and the unreported logistic regressions, the dummy variables for a Moody's or S&P rating were not significantly related to TALF redemption. Thus, a rating by either one of these agencies was not associated with any increase or decrease propensity for the TALF loans to be re repaid before September 30th, 2010. Section 5.2, logistic regressions of factors associated with early TALF CMBS loan redemptions. The logistic regression allows us to test significant factors associated with the early TALF CMBS redemption after controlling for other factors. Let PI be the probability that the ith TALF loan will be repaid in full on or prior to September 30th, 2010. If the dependent variable YI equals 1, then the TALF loan is repaid in full by the, that date. If YI equals 0, then the TALF CMBS loan has not been repaid in full by September 30th, 2010. Let XI be a row vector of independent variables of the ith TALF CMBS loan observation is defined as the column vector of coefficients estimated for the model from Johnson and DiNardo, 1997, page 424. The probability of a dependent variable being unity in the logistic model is a big equation. Five different specifications of the logistic regressions are reported in Table 5. A number of factors are significantly associated with early TALF redemptions. Higher loan date, estimated subsidy rates, higher TALF spreads over U.S. Treasuries at the loan date and a bigger change in the CMBX from the loan date to the redemption date are all associated with significantly higher propensity to repay TALF loans early. The positive sign of the CMBX coefficients allows us to reject the market timing hypothesis 1. A greater decline in credit spreads from the loan date to the redemption date is associated with an increase in propensity 
to repay TALF loans. Thus, early redemption cannot be explained by market trends. Early redemption must be attributed to factors specific to the CMBS tranche purchased or the borrower of the TALF money. While we can reject hypothesis one, hypothesis two is strongly supported. If the identity of the buyer of the CMBS is BlackRock or PIMCO, then the TALF loans are significantly more likely to be repaid early. To quantify the magnitude of this latter effect, let us consider Model 1. If the average characteristics of the TALF loans are selected from Table 1 and the buyer of the CMBS is not one of the top five borrowers from the TALF, then the predicted probability of early TALF redemption according to Equation 5 and Model 1 is 49%. Yet, if the buyer is BlackRock, then the predicted probability of TALF redemption jumps to 97.3%. A similar but less dramatic increase in the chances of early TALF repayment occurs if the buyer is PIMCO. A loan with the average characteristics and PIMCO as the buyer has an 84.2% predicted probability of early TALF loan repayment, according to Model 1 in Table 5. Since the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury are guaranteed to make money from loans that are paid in full early, they should be happy that both BlackRock and PIMCO have displayed a tendency to repay TALF CMBS loans early. In total, BlackRock has paid 90 of its 94 TALF CMBS loans early, and PIMCO has repaid 47 of its 55 TALF CMBS loans early. Compare this to the ratio of 201 early redemptions out of 537 loans taken out by all the other asset managers besides BlackRock and PIMCO combined. Thus, using the simplest calculus, BlackRock and PIMCO were at least twice as likely to repay their loans to buy CMBS as other asset managers. In addition, since BlackRock is one of the eight active managers for the U.S. Treasury's Toxic Asset Program, the Legacy Securities Program, the early redemption in the TALF CMBS program may indicate that taxpayers are likely to turn a profit on BlackRock's management of RMBS and CMBS portfolios financed by taxpayers in the LSP. By the end of the third quarter of September 30, 2010, BlackRock's percent returns on its Legacy Security Program investments were the third highest of the asset managers, according to U.S. Treasury's calculations. Other factors are significantly associated with lower propensity to repay TALF loans backed by CMBS. Higher volatilities at the loan date make early TALF redemptions less likely. This is consistent with the subsidy in TALF loans from equations 1 and 4 being positive functions of the volatility of the CMBS. Consistent with this theme, less senior or higher numbered tranches are more risky and significantly less likely to be redeemed early. Loans backed by CMBS issued at the peak bubble years of 2005, 2006, and 2007 are significantly less likely to be repaid early. Finally, higher leverage makes the strike price of the put written by the Federal Reserve higher. The put embedded in the non-recourse loans is more valuable when the strike price or loan-to-value ratio is higher. Thus, it is not surprising that a higher leverage ratio is associated with a lower propensity to repay TALF CMBS loans early. Conclusion. This is the first study to empirically test the performance of the U.S. government's attempt to purchase non-agency mortgage-backed assets after the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009. The term asset-backed securities loan facility, TALF's Commercial Mortgage-Backed Securities, CMBS, purchase program funded the purchase of $14.3 billion of CMBS with low-interest non-recourse loans from July 24, 2009 to March 29, 2010. The Federal Reserve offered private asset managers three- to five-year loans for up to 85.6% of the purchase price of CMBS. Approximately half of these 686 loans were repaid early by September 30, 2010. This paper develops a model based on standard option pricing techniques to estimate the subsidies embedded in Federal Reserve loans. While this paper estimates that the subsidy rates for these loans were in the neighborhood of 34% of the loan value at the time of issue, the subsidy rate was negative by the end of the period study. Early TALF loan repayments coincided with disappearing loan subsidies, rising TALF loan spreads, and declining collateral volatility. These findings are consistent with the predictions of the theoretical model tested. This paper looks at several other characteristics of early loan repayments in the TALF CMBS program. Loans used to buy bubble year vintages 
2005 to 2007 of CMBS were significantly less likely to be repaid. Yet the study finds no evidence that asset managers that were better at market timing repaid their loans early. In contrast, the identity of the asset manager seems to matter. TALF loans extended to BlackRock and PIMCO were significantly more likely to be repaid in full early. The predicted probability of repaying the TALF loans estimated in one specification of the logistic regressions jumped from 49 to 97 percent or 84 percent if the asset manager was one of the bond giants BlackRock or PIMCO respectively. In addition, loans used to buy more senior CMBS tranches were more likely to be repaid. Finally, loans with higher spreads over U.S. Treasuries were significantly more likely to be paid back before maturity. <music>